Welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to finish off the, the problem that we started in the previous um, video, and that is to find the data, the, the standard deviation, excuse me, of the data set that included 48, 53, 62, 44, and 56. And what we followed up with, the, the last thing we did is we found the mean, okay? So off to the side, I'm just going to record that again. The mean of our data set was 52.6, and that's going to be fairly important. So. What we're going to do here is our next step after we've calculated the mean is we're going to organize a table and this table is just going to help us eventually work our way towards finding the top of that fraction of our formula. Okay, so again, the formula we're working with is this thing. You'll notice that basically I wrote out the top of this thing without the n, without the square root. Okay, so we're trying to get to that. Okay, but it takes some order of operations to do that. So we're going to start off by taking it, each individual data point and we're going to subtract the mean from it. So that's our first column. Okay, so notice I've said here's x. That means here's our, my data points. Okay, I know my mean. And I first need to do each data point minus the mean. So here is going to be 48 minus 52.6. Now this is going to give me a negative number, but I'm okay with that. Okay, that gives me a negative 4.6, but I'm going to record that. Okay, then I have 53 minus 52.6. That gives me 0 0.4. I have 62 minus 52.6. That's 9.4. I have 44 minus 52.6, which is a negative 8.6. And I have a 56 minus 52.6, and that's 3.4, okay? So I'm just going to record these values, okay? And basically at this point in time, all I've done is I've found the inside of the parentheses, right? Now, the next thing that needs to happen for each of those five values is I need to take this value here, this x minus the mean, and I need to square it, okay? Because I've done, it's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, I've done the parentheses, now it's time to do the exponent. So I'm just going to take each of the values here that I have in this category, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write it over one spot, and I'm just going to square it. So I'm going to take x minus u, and I'm going to square that value. So what is negative 4.6 squared? That's the question. So I've got 4.6, there's negative 4.6, I'm going to square it on my calculator, that gives me 21.16. By the way, no rounding, no rounding here, okay? I'm going to take a 0.4, I'm going to square it, that gives me a 0 0.16. I'm going to take 9.4 and square it, that gives me 88.36, that's a big number. I'm going to take negative 8.6, I'm going to square it, that gives me a 73.96. By the way, notice how they're all positive here. That's because when you square a negative number, when you multiply a negative times a negative, it gives you a positive, okay? This is 11.56 when you square it, okay? So now, what I've done as far as the formula goes is I've found then each of the individual data points, I've taken it, subtracted the mean, and squared it. Now comes this little symbol here, okay? That's summation, Greek letter sigma. Again, follow up from the last video. If you haven't watched it, you need to go watch it. Okay. And all it means is I'm going to take all of the values that I had here and I'm going to add them together. In other words, this column that I calculated, these five values, I'm going to add them up. Okay. So what is the sum of those five values? Well, let's, let's add them up here. 11.56, 73.96, notice no rounding, 88.36, 0 0.16, and 21.16 gives me a grand total of 195.2. We're almost there. Okay, what we found now, at this point in time, when I go back to the original formula, I have found the top of the fraction. I have added together all of the values minus mu squared, right? So now a couple of other things. Order of operations says the next thing that I should probably do here is I need to take that value and I need to divide it by how many values I actually had, right? In this case, we had five data values. So I'm going to divide by 5. What is 195.2 divided by 5? That is 39.04. So the next step then, 195.2 divided by 5 is equal to 39.04. Almost there. My last step now, going back to the formula, is to take that 39.4 and square root it. Once I take the square root of that value, I have the standard deviation that I've been looking for the whole time. So the square root of 39.04 should be 6 point something, 6.248. 
And that, friends, is how you calculate standard deviation of a population. Again, the sample one is a slightly different formula. It's the same process, the same table. You just got a little bit difference in the, in the formulas. You can see on the formula sheet if you really want to go look. Um, but, but that should get you through the homework today. That's a good introduction to standard deviation. You're obviously looking at this and going, man, that's really, that's a lot of work. If I had 10 values, that's a lot of work, right? What if I had 100 values? Or like on your quiz, what if I have 1,000 values, okay? And that's the beauty of Microsoft Excel and what it can do for us. So that's what I'm going to teach you next.